Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, an entitled neighbor trespassed my two-year-old off their property for no reason. I then buy their property and get epic revenge. Here is what happened. Subscribe to Ripe on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. About seven months ago, my wife and I bought our first house. Before this, we were renting a condo, which was pretty nice, but we wanted to be able to actually own the property that we lived in. Plus, this house had a pretty nice backyard where my son could play and that driveway wrapped around to extra parking in the back. The backyard was mostly situated on the side of the house, but it had a nice hill to it. Of course, when we bought the house, we immediately started fixing it up. Not that it was in bad shape at all, it's just now we could actually do repairs and make our space more tailored to us versus before when we were renting. There was no fence or property line between us and the neighbors next door, so I thought I should buy some cheap wire fencing so that my son would not wander off into the neighbor's yard. And before someone says we should be watching him, if you have a toddler, you just know how fast they can move. Now, I noticed that the next door neighbor's lawn was overgrown and that their backyard was significantly bigger than ours. I thought that they would be okay with my son playing in their backyard. Now, don't mistake me for an entitled neighbor. I did want to make sure it was okay and if it was not a big deal. I also thought I would offer to mow their lawn for them in return for them letting our son play around in their backyard. Well, they did not like that idea. They had told me that we better stay off their yard or there was going to be problems. Obviously, I didn't want problems at all and if they did not want us even stepping foot in their yard, well, I wanted to respect that. I just figured that there was no harm in asking, but this could also be a chance to get to know our neighbors and vice versa. But like I said, I wanted to respect their wishes, so... The next weekend, my wife and I start buying stakes, markers and some cheap fencing so we can mark the property line and enclose our backyard. We bought some of that fence that rolls up. While we were putting the stakes in the ground to mark the line, we could see our neighbors watching us from their second story window. I thought that they were either making sure we were not overstepping any boundaries or they were just nosy. Well, it turns out it was the first option because the very next day when we went outside to go work, there was a bunch of old rusted children's toys and some playground equipment sitting right where we were when they were watching us. A few weeks ago we had a serious incident with these neighbors. My mother-in-law, who some might consider a just no mother-in-law, but that's a story for another day, wanted to be the babysitter for our child. My husband insisted that we should at least let her try, so that is what we did. And well, mother-in-law ended up getting drunk and not watching my two-year-old. Unfortunately, he ended up getting outside and crossed the property line to the neighbor's land. The neighbors totally freaked out and called the police on my two-year-old after my drunk mother-in-law did not respond to their angry shouting. They demanded that the police trespass my son off their property, which was obviously ridiculous. The police returned my son to my house and had a serious word with my drunk mother-in-law. And yes, we went full no contact with her after this. Obviously, this was already weird. It was clear that they did not even want us near their property line and my wife made a great point that the rusted kid's toy was saying, hey, keep your kid off my lawn. They did not like kids, who knows, my wife also swears that when we spotted the rusted equipment that the curtain on the neighbor's house moved as if someone was watching them. I also happened to know some people and decided to find out who actually owned the property next to us. It turns out it is not these people. I had a feeling, don't ask, sometimes I just know, and that they were just renters. Well, I was able to find the actual landlord's information online and decided to send him an email stating that I was concerned because their tenants were storing rusted equipment next to our property line and our son could easily get hurt even if he was staying within the boundaries. I also let him know that they are not mowing their weeds slash backyard and it could easily be a hiding spot for rodents and whatnot. I have no idea if that's actually true, I just made the second part up to spite them. Is that wrong of me? Anyways, a gentleman named Steve emails back and thanks me for the information and that he will be out the following weekend to inspect what is going on. Surprisingly, he actually does come out the following weekend and the toys and rusted stuff is still there. 
Steve tells them that they have a certain amount of time to clean it up and get the grass mowed because it was a part of their renter's contract. I also took this time to introduce myself to him when I saw him standing out by his truck. I let him know that I was not trying to cause any trouble, that I just wanted to report it because it really could be a safety concern. He told me that he had kids so he completely understood. A week passed and the equipment was still there. So since I was feeling that I was on Steve's good side, I decided to shoot him another email and tell him that the equipment is still not cleaned up and my son has not really been able to go out into the backyard because we fear that he could trip and fall and get scraped slash cut with this rusted equipment. Steve sighs on the phone and I could tell that he was frustrated. He even mentions that he is tired of paying property taxes on a property that is not being maintained. And right then and there an idea came to me. I offered to buy part of his land so that it would make our backyard bigger and cut into his backyard. I even told him that I could help him maintain his yard as his renters were not doing so and guess what, he agreed. So not only was our backyard going to be bigger, but the next door neighbors had to eventually pick up the rusty equipment because it was on our property. Ha, sucks to suck. Oh and by the way, my wife and I did eventually get the fence put in. And by the way guys, since I'm still recording with the new microphone, I would appreciate some feedback about the audio quality. Thank you very much and now let's continue. And the next one is titled, I got the boss fired. And it is an absolute XXL story. Background, I've been working the retail business for over 20 years and let me tell you, some of the managers they hire, I can do a better job. But I'm getting ahead of myself here, over the years of doing retail, I have established a reputation for myself. I am Mrs. Reliable. Need some to come in? They call me. Need someone to stay late? They call me. Need to switch with someone because management said no for your day off? They call me. Need to switch with someone because of a last minute plan? They call me. You can probably see where this story might be going, right? So this story takes place a couple of years ago when I worked in a major grocery store in my town slash city as a cashier. On to the story. This has taken place a couple of years ago back in 2020. I'm on my two years at this store and we went through so many people and managers it was not funny. Literally, it felt like we had a revolving door with how much turnover and employment we had. Getting back to the story, I was a cashier and the thing about me doing the job is that I have a tendency to be too good at my job. I was just hired to be a cashier, I was not a manager nor a monitor, someone that is a step down from management but doesn't have all the responsibilities of management, nor was a customer service. However, I was trained for nearly all the duties of someone who is. Need change? I went to cashier, got the money out of the drawer and went to grab the change that they needed. Need an override? I came over to see what the problem is and did the override. Need something from behind the counter? I just need to know what it is that you need and I went and grabbed it. I did all this on top of my cashier duties and self-checkout duties. Then douchebag came along, my manager at the time, let's call her Ashley. Ashley is the front end manager, meaning she is in charge of everything that goes on at the registers, cash office, where all the money is, customer service and the self checkouts. Now I liked Ashley, she was a really good boss and I liked working with her. However, Ashley had gotten pregnant and was expecting her second child, I was excited for her. Unfortunately, when Ashley came back, though she was no longer going to be a manager, nor was she going to go full time. She decided to come back as part time, I cannot really blame her though, you are working 40 hours a week and are not allowed any overtime whatsoever. Plus, you can be working as early as 5am to working as late as whenever the last customer decides to leave. Last time that happened when didn't get out until 11.15 pm. Enter the douchebag. If you ever wonder what happened to that spoiled brat in school whose mummy never said no and always got what they always wanted, that is douchebag all grown up in a manager's position. Douchebag was the type of manager that if he told you to do something, he expected you to do it without any questions. Have plans after work, douchebag expected you to whip out your phone right then and there and cancel your plans and come into work instead. Have a doctor's appointment, douchebag expected to cancel that appointment and then come into work. 
If you told him no, he would say in the most condescending tone, well, I need you to do it anyway. And then just standing there scowling out you the whole time. Basically trying to intimidate you by making you feel so uncomfortable by the staring until you cave in. So now for the setup. Now I had my fair share of awful managers to the point where if I didn't need the money I would have walked right out right then and there and never returned. And also I had my fair share of good managers. Douchebag was somewhere in the middle leaning more towards the walking out. Now with me I'll admit. Over the years I developed a sassy sarcastic personality. I am blunt, no filter, say what's on my mind and I don't put up with people's BS. Apparently douchebag never got the memo of me not taking people's BS. Around this time summer was ending meaning we were in the now hiring stage and many positions were starting to open up in the store. Keep this in mind what douchebag did to get me to start my pro revenge. Strike number one was the following. I had out of patient vein surgery done on one of my legs and needed to take a few days off. Since I had some vacation time saved up I used my hours for those few days that I didn't have to worry so much about not getting paid. Douchebag called me a day before I was supposed to come in asking if I can do a 9 to 1. I asked him three times over the phone who is closing because originally I was supposed to close that day until I got my approval for my days off. Douchebag never answered me so I just figured they had it covered. I came in and of course halfway through my shift douchebag calls me over and says that they don't have a closer. Or closer, I'm not exactly sure how to say that. Keep in mind that I asked him three times over the phone who was closing. Douchebag wanted me to clock out, go home for a few hours and then come to work and close. I said no and then he tried the whole guilt tripping about not having anyone and that we really need you to do this. I said no because number one I'm really tired and just came off surgery like three days ago and number two I already made plans with my husband for the evening. Of course douchebag did not like this because the next time I came to work douchebag was just being petty and passive aggressive with me. Basically he will either pretend I was not there, ignored me or the transaction that he was doing was taking longer than it should and then chastise me in front of the customers for taking too long to get him. When I had my follow up appointment with the vain doctor douchebag asked me if I can come earlier. I told him no I cannot because I have a doctor's appointment in the morning that day. Then he did his usual well need you to do it anyway and then started to doing that stare with me. Unfortunately for him I am used to this when it comes to Karen's and Kevin's trying to intimidate me because something didn't come right. I quickly shut that down by getting the other cashier's attentions when they need help with something or quickly grabbed a customer's attention. When I came in after my appointment douchebag with a smug grin very loudly in earshot of the bigwigs from corporate visiting that day. Well OP looks like you noticed that I didn't call you in because we didn't need you. I replied good because I wasn't able to come in early anyway. Strike number two remember how I said that the store had openings? Well it turns out customer service needed some help and the only way to get there was to ask your manager. So I went to douchebag and asked about being at the customer service desk with everything that I've already been doing I was basically the front end assistant manager without the pay and the title. Douchebag said that he would get back to me especially since I've been doing a great job. Two to three weeks later I am seeing people that I trained or have started months after I did getting promoted to customer service desk while I stayed as a cashier with all the others responsibilities piled on top. The customer service desk position would have easily been a 0.50 cent raise. The monitor position would have been a 0.75 cent raise. And of course douchebag did not want to pay more for doing the exact same thing that I was already doing. I was starting to get the message of why pay for the cow when the milk is free. So strike number three. I was starting to look for another job at this point because I was getting sick and tired of how I was being treated but I wanted to try and give this guy one last chance. So I found out that the seafood department in my store had an opening and I even talked to the seafood department manager Debbie about me possibly being in her department. He was ecstatic to have me and was willing to work around my college schedule. I had to talk to my manager douchebag in order to get the transfer going. 
I talked to Douchebag and he started to come up with any and all kinds of excuses to not have me transferred. I quickly shut that down and even the one where he tried to say that I cannot because another co-worker was transferring. The first time I've heard of this. But then the co-worker said they had no problem with me going, so I thought that was that, right? Wrong. Three to four weeks have passed and I've been getting nowhere with the whole transferring to the other department. Even Debbie was wondering why it was taking so long to get to the seafood department and why management was dragging their feet with this. Turns out Douchebag blocked my transfer and they wound up hiring a new employee to the seafood department. Douchebag thought that if there was no positions available and he can just deny my transfer that I have no choice but to stay. After an argument between the two of us about this because I was calling him out on his BS, Douchebag said the magic words, just do your job. So cue the malicious compliance. Just do my job? Okay, I was so glad that the wearing a mask was required, otherwise Douchebag might have seen my evil smile when I agreed to just do my job. Need an override? Sorry, but I'm not management, nor am I a monitor, so I cannot do that. Let me go grab someone who can. Need change? Sorry, but I'm not management, nor am I a monitor, so I cannot do that. Let me go grab someone who can. Need something behind the customer service desk? Sorry, but I'm not trained, nor am I customer service. Let me grab someone who can get that for you. Douchebag manager was at his wit's end and even tried to write me up for something. I quickly shut that down when I started to recite what being a cashier entails and what my actual job of being a cashier is. And I told him that if he wants to me to continue with all those responsibilities that he needs to promote me so I can do all those responsibilities. He quickly stepped back into being his passive aggressive behavior that I quickly shut down. I eventually found another job with a better pay and better benefits and handed in my resignation of me leaving in 10 days. That douchebag tried to deny and say, no, you have to give us two weeks notice. I quickly shut that down with a response, you would not be giving us a two week notice if you're going to fire us or lay us off or let go, just a two minute warning. Cue the petty revenge. Now, you're probably wondering what could I have possibly done for the petty revenge, right? Well, there was an old saying, never kill the golden goose. Well, readers, what do you think happens to a department that is solely dependable on one person whose reputation is Mrs. Reliable? Well, the following. Need me to come in on my day off? Sorry, I can't. I have plans. Need me to stay late? Sorry, I can't. Already made plans. Someone called out? Sorry, cannot make it. I did this throughout my entire rest of my stay at that place and douchebag could not do anything about it either and it was starting to get to him on what happens when you rely heavily on someone else but treat them so badly that they actually decide to leave. Douchebag's performance because I wasn't there to cover his ass was starting to take a toll. He had to do much more now of his own responsibilities and there wasn't a thing he could do to me. He kept trying to be extra passive aggressive with me, to which I just smiled and waved and said goodbye to everyone but him. Now this would not be a pro-revenge story without the actual pro-revenge. After talking to a friend of mine about what happened when I worked there, he told me to report this to the district manager because that kind of behavior is not good for the workplace. So cue the pro-revenge. I got the email address of the district manager from my friend and then I went back to the store as a customer. I kept in touch with a couple of my old co-workers and kept asking them how they were doing and how is work going. None of them had a problem inventing to me on how bad things were getting with douchebag. I asked if they did not mind if I put their name in the complaint or if they just wanted to be anonymous. A lot of them chose the letter, I whipped out my phone, used the quick memo app that I had and quickly wrote the notes in my phone. The date and the register that the cashier was on at the time, I sent that email with the attached notes and with the entire account on my part as well to the district manager. Now, this would not be a pro revenge if it just stopped there, I took a step further. You see, with the receipts that we get, there is a survey on the bottom of every receipt and management kept trying to boost us to get customers to take the survey because it helped with the story front and all the points that the store gets. Well, here's the thing about that survey. When you fill out the survey, including the comments, everyone gets to see it and I mean everyone, I really mean everyone. 
douchebag, the assistant store manager, the store manager, the regional manager, the district manager and the representative of corporate gets to see it all. So you can imagine what I did. Needed a snack for school? Filled out the survey. Needed groceries? Filled out the survey. I went to that store multiple times and gotten so many different surveys because there was not a limit for how many you can fill out. And I made sure to put everything that Douchebag was doing on all those surveys, including how he treated his employees. Three months after I left, the person they hired back in Seafood to make sure I couldn't go back there quit. Six months after I left, Douchebag was nowhere to be found, a new manager took over for him and no one seems to know what happened to Douchebag. Edit, for those of you wondering and commenting, no, I did not stay in one place for 20 years, I would not stay working for some place only making minimum wage and not getting benefits. The retail business is really shading, the only raise I got was when minimum wage went up, but during the pandemic we all started making 0.30 cents more an hour, but when the state reopened and they announced that we'll be going back to minimum wage, more than half the staff left. The 20 years of experience is me working the retail industry with different jobs and before anyone asks, yes, I have applied to management positions. I either get brushed off or they keep telling me because I don't have a degree that I cannot get the management position. I just wanted to clear that up. And yeah guys, I can definitely relate to OP because I have worked these jobs before where I simply did too good of a job and I felt like I was being exploited a little bit. Obviously, I didn't stay in those jobs for very long. If you have ever had similar experiences, please let us know in the comments and I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I see you again tomorrow.